this section we're going to talk about biomolecules and biomolecules are carbon-based molecules. Carbon-based molecules are the foundation of life. And this is actually a really cool image of an elephant in utero. So carbon is the foundation of life. And what we mean by that is it actually makes up all of our biomolecules. And that's because carbon has some pretty cool properties. Carbon has four electrons in its outermost energy level. And that's gonna be the electrons that are going to interact and form bonds. So since it has those four electrons, it can potentially form four covalent bonds with other elements. If you remember back to when we talked about bonds, covalent bonds are extremely strong and they don't disassociate in water. So because of this, we are gonna have strong, stable molecules that are made, which of course are the type of molecules we want in our bodies and in other living things. Carbon-based molecules have three general types of structures and you're gonna be seeing these a lot coming up as we talk about the different biomolecules. The first type of structure is a straight chain. This can be sh seen a lot when we go into our lipids, like the fatty acid tails are just long hydrocarbon chains. You can also have branch chains. You saw this earlier when we looked at the carbohydrate on top of a glycoprotein. That was a branch chain. And then we see rings a lot when we see different types of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are often rings that are repeated over and over again. Another definition that's good to know is what an organic compound is. For biology, an organic compound is any compound that contains carbon. And since carbon's the foundation of life, any living thing we consider organic. Even dead things are organic because they still have all the carbon-based molecules inside of them. They're just no longer living. So in biology, when you hear organic, think carbon and think living or once living. So this section we're talking about biomolecules and the future sections we're gonna do in this unit are all about our different biomolecules. So what is a biomolecule? Well, it's just a term we use for these four common macromolecules in living organisms. Now, when we say macromolecules, macro means large and these are just really big molecules in living organisms. Specifically, the four molecules that we will be talking about are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Our biomolecules have similar structures because a lot of organic compounds use these repeating subunits called monomers. Monomer means one unit because mono means one. And so these monomers are then repeated over and over and they are bonded together with covalent bonds to form a polymer. And poly means many. This picture here shows that those five monomers together make a polymer. A really cool thing about biomolecules is they can have the same monomer, but depending on how those monomers are put together, we can make totally different large biomolecules or polymers of those monomers. So both of these images, the monomer is glucose, which is a single unit of sugar. But on the top one, it's branched, and the way it's structured makes starch, and starch is a component of potatoes and some other plants. Below, the single straight chain of glucose is making the polymer cellulose, which would be in celery and grass, and it's very different than starch. Our bodies actually can't really digest it. So the polymer can be completely different depending on how the monomers are put together. This last side is just a list of some prefixes and suffixes that we will be using this whole unit. Some of them you've already seen, some of them you won't see until our next section of notes. Glyco you've seen before because we've talked about glycoproteins, which is a carbohydrate chain or a sugar attached to a protein in the cell membrane. So glyco just means sugar. Mono means one. You've already learned about it as a monomer. We'll learn about monosaccharides in our carbohydrate unit. Di means two. Two monomers together make a dimer, or two saccharides together, two sugars together make a disaccharide. Poly means many, like a polymer or a polysaccharide. And then our last one we'll talk about next section, 
but sugars often end in the suffix "-ose", which is actually really handy because then we can know it's a sugar. Examples of that would be glucose, sucrose, and fructose.